Good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Welcome, everybody. You're a good God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. It's your blood that makes a difference in me. Father, we do not take it for granted. Welcome, welcome. If you're joining us, today is day two. Day two. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. We are live. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. God bless you, everyone that is joining us. Please share this broadcast. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, we worship you. We bless your name. Please share. Please invite somebody. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Happy new month. Happy first Sunday of the month. I see some people joining us from India. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please share. Yeah, let somebody come online. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Has it turned anyone's life around? Yes, Lord. Hmm. I will worship you forever. Love you forever because this God is too good. I will worship you forever. Somebody love on the Lord. Love on him. He's a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you are a good God. We thank you, Jesus. He's picking you. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Yes, Lord. All the praise. Wow, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We exalt you. We glorify your name. 
Mate kaboko sataya basende. Kudraba ze kabos kandaya braba jotere gobos sata. Father, we worship you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, King of glory. We exalt you in the name of Jesus. We say you are worthy, O oh God. We thank you. Somebody worship the Lord. Thank him for his good and his mercies endures forever. Oh, Talin, thank you for joining us. God bless you. God bless you, everyone that is joining us. God bless you. Hallelujah. Talin, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us this morning. This morning, watch. Invite somebody. Just lift up your voice. Begin to thank the Lord. This is the first Sunday of the month of August. And God has been good to us. Hallelujah. This is the second day of our 30-day fasting and prayer. I want to say, Father, we thank you. For those of us on water fast, God has been our strength. Hallelujah. It is possible. It is possible. Hallelujah. To wait on the Lord. The Bible says that they that wait on the Lord, that he shall renew their strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my family. I thank you for all that is connected with me. Somebody worship the Lord. Please come in, come in, come in. Don't stay outside and watch us. Come in and join us. Hallelujah. Because God is about to do something today. I'm so excited. You need to see how excited I am because I am confident that God is going to do something mighty in the name of Jesus. You and I, our lives will not remain the same. Hallelujah. Jesus is our deliverer. Jesus is the one who, who, is, who has delivered you who is delivering you. I will continue to deliver you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I just want you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you for this hour of prayer because Father, you are going to meet me. You're going to energize me. Spiritually, I'm going to be lifted. Hallelujah. You see, this fasting and prayer is for you, is for me. You know, it's not prescriptive. I am being blessed and I know that you are being blessed. Hallelujah. So lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everyone worldwide who is being blessed. There are some that are in the hospital. They are calling. They say, woman of God, thank you. Even at work, they are able to connect on their break. Some are in different parts of the world. They, they are also connecting with us. You know, that is the power that God has given us. That when we call on his name, he sent forth his word. And his word healed. His word transformed. His word turned things around around hallelujah so i want to say lord i thank you that we have a god that answers prayer we have a god that hears prayer we have a god that that causes change to happen in the lives of people just say lord we bless your name we thank you you're a god of a new name you're a god that gives your people transformation you're a god that 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 changes the destiny of people you're a god that takes us from one level to the next level father we do not take these things for granted we say lord we are grateful we are grateful we thank you we bless your name somebody lift up your the name of the lord hallelujah bless his holy name father we worship you we thank you in jesus mighty name we pray amen you know i just want to encourage every one of us that is waiting on the lord every one of us that is fasting you see the body i know when we call a fast it's because we want to see a change in our world when we call a fast and, and when we call for prayer we are asking god to come down and do what makes him god when we call for a fast we are saying lord we cannot do this on our own we need divine intervention we need divine intervention all over the world we need divine intervention in the church we need divine intervention in our communities we need divine intervention in our nations hallelujah the bible says i just want to encourage in intercessors you know there are many people when it comes to interceding some intercede because the church has said oh it's time to pray but i'm talking to those who are intercessors there is a mandate for you to stand in the gap for nations there's a mandate for you to lift up your voice that your voice will be relevant in the realms of the spirit you said the lord gave me the scripture and i want to read it to you zephaniah 3 verse 18 it says i will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly 
who are among you to whom its reproach is a burden. I don't know about you, but what is going on in the body of Christ is a burden to my heart. What is going on in this pandemic in the body of Christ is a burden to my spirit. What is going on all over the world is a burden in my soul. I don't know about it, but I know that some of us, there is a great burden in our hearts for God to change the world, for God to intervene and bring an end completely to this pandemic and return people back to what it is. I want you to know that there is a reward for you who is standing in the gap. There is a reward for you who is praying. There is a reward for you whom God has called at such a time like this. The Bible says, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you to whom it's a re its report approach is a burden. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame, amen. I will gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. At the time, I will bring them back. I even at the, at the time, I will gather you for I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth. When I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. The Lord is saying here, you know, many times as intercessors, we are, we are praying, we're standing in the gap, and sometimes it looks as if nothing is going on. But the Lord is saying that he will deal with all who afflict us. He will save the lame, those who are tired, those who are worn out. The Lord is saying he will save them. Everywhere we have been driven out. Some people have been driven out of their churches. Some people have been driven out of their buildings. Some people have lost some very valuable things in this period. Some people have lost their businesses because their businesses is people oriented, hallelujah. And there is no way they can, they can, they can even online, they can't even move. Like I know some people who run event centers and their centers are based on people booking it for events, for church, for everything. Suddenly overnight, everything is wiped off. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to you, that everywhere you were put to shame, that he will bring you back. He will appoint you. He will announce you. So it doesn't matter what has happened. God has the power to turn things around for you. So I just want to say, Father, I thank you because our prayers are making changes. Our prayers are, making, are, are causing changes in the world. Our prayers are turning things around. Our prayers are bringing the captives back. Our prayers are causing those who are lame to rise up and work. Open your mouth, begin to pray. Father, Lord, we thank you because of our prayer. They are making impact. Our prayers, they are causing changes. Our prayers, they are making men and women draw close to you. Your prayers are opening all the gates. Everywhere people are bound, oh God. Father, our prayers are causing impact. Somebody lift up your voice, begin to bless the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. We give you all the praise because our prayers are causing changes, oh God. Our prayers are causing changes. Mate oske. Hey, Lord, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Lord, we will not give up. We will keep standing in the gap. We will keep praying. We will keep seeking your face because we know that our prayers are causing changes because we know that our prayers, God is making things to happen. We know that our prayers, God is doing something mighty. Somebody please share this broadcast, invite somebody. Somebody bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you because our prayers are causing changes all over the world. Our prayers are causing men and women to draw into the kingdom. Our prayers are breaking every chain of addiction. Our prayers are breaking every chain of of, of, of the enemy in the lives of people. Our prayers are causing eyes to be open. Our prayers are causing people to arise from where they are and become what God has said they will be. Lord, we bless your name, we worship you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Today, 
is day two of our 30 days fasting and prayer. My name is Apostle Ezine Ijeoma, and I want to welcome you and thank everyone who is standing with us, who is praying alongside with us to, in this 30 days. I pray that God will strengthen you. I pray that everything you desire from the Lord, that in these 30 days, the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. I also pray that you will encounter God in a new way, that you will encounter God in a mighty way. You know, let me just share this little testimony with you. My year old yesterday came and he said mom can I share my dream with you I said what did you what was your dream he said he was he was walking with some of his friends and he saw one of his class teacher of his previous class and she said and he said she wasn't looking she wasn't looking at where she was going and she fell into a ditch and her head was broken so I held his hands and we began to intercede and pray for his teacher his previous, maybe two classes away, that was whom he, the Lord opened his eyes that we should pray for. So even as much as if a seven-year-old can, can wait on the Lord and God is revealing to him people we need to stand in the gap for. And when we prayed, we, we, we came against every misfortune, everything that will send her to the hospital. And we stood in the gap and said, Father, you reveal to redeem. So I want you to know that this 30 days, don't take it for granted. God is in the business of using you and I. He can use anybody in the place of prayer. When you fast and when you pray, your spiritual antenna is heightened. You are able to see more. You are able to hear more. You are able to know what God is saying. Hallelujah. So it's very important that you and I, engage you know even if you're not part of this 30 days fasting and prayer but make fasting and prayer a lifestyle hallelujah make it a lifestyle let no week go past you without you sitting with god if a seven year old god did not show me that god showed me other things over the night but god showed him what was what the enemy was planning for his teacher and i believe that as we stood in a prayer of agreement that the teacher whatever the enemy has planned for her is destroyed because of our prayer so that is why i encourage everybody with zephaniah 3 verse 18 to know that every burden you carry in your heart for God's people, everything you do for God's people, everywhere you stand in the gap for God's people, God will reward you. The theme of this prayer jumpstart fourth anniversary is in the book of Hebrews 6 verse 10, that God is not unjust. Hallelujah. Let me open that scripture. God is not unjust to forget the labor that you have labored for his kingdom. God is not unjust to forget what you have labored in his name for God's people. And you continue to labor. It's not like you, 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 you labored once and you relax. No, you keep working. You keep doing things for the kingdom. You keep standing in the gap. You keep in the face of God, not just for yourself, but for people, for nations. God will not forget. God will not forget your labor of love. God will surely reward because he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Today, our topic says, Jesus is our deliverer. Hallelujah. Man cannot deliver you. Somebody paid that price for you and I to be delivered. Amen. Let's open our Bibles. Or if you have your prayer, John start book, we are in day two. Hallelujah. And it says in John 10, 10, the thief does not come except. You see, anytime you see it, an appearance, either as a friend, either as an acquaintance, either as somebody, there is something that brought them. Nobody just comes for nothing. Hallelujah. And it says the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So the word of God is saying to you and the word of God is saying to me that the devil has three motives, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus is saying that I have a better alternative. I am your deliverer. I have come that you may have life, not just have life and live just the ordinary life, but the supernatural life, to live the super abundant life, the life of more than enough. Hallelujah. So what is the word of God saying that do not fear? I am with you. 
Do not fear, for I am your God. Hosea, if you have your Bible, open to the book of Hosea 13, 14. It says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave, and I will redeem them from death. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, I will ransom you from the power of the grave. Sometimes you see people, they are so afraid. Oh, there is something bad that is happening, not including you. Because Jesus said, I will ransom them. He said, I will ransom you from the power of the grave. I will ransom you from the works of darkness. I will ransom you from everything that has intention to silence your voice. I will ransom you from everything that has intention to, to, to mute you. That that is what he will do. Because why? The plan of the enemy for you is, and the pl plan of the enemy for me is that he will destroy what God is building in your life. That he will steal what God is building in your life. That he will, just, he will kill what God is building in your life. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the finished work of the cross. Thank God because in Christ, you and I have deliverance. Because in Christ, you and I are set free. Because in Christ, you and I have the name that is above every name. So the, the devil has no power over your life. The devil has no power over my life. I want you to turn your Bibles, if you have it, to the book of Colossians. Hallelujah. The book of Colossians chapter 1. Amen. Verse 13. That is where we'll be leading some of our prayers from. Amen. He says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Glory to God. Jesus has delivered you from the powers of darkness. And has conveyed us. He has carried us. He has pushed us. He has, he has translated us. Hallelujah. Into the kingdom of the, of the son. Hallelujah. In whom we have redemption through the blood. And the forgiveness of sin. So child of God, Jesus has translated you and I. When you gave your life to Christ, he delivered you from the powers of darkness. When you came, became a believer, he delivered you from the works of the wicked. You moved out of the camp of Satan and you moved into the camp of Jesus Christ. So you are on a new level. You are on a new terrain. You are on a new, new you are in a new kingdom and you must walk in that consciousness. That this is who I am. I no longer dwell in the captivity of darkness. I am in the I am in the kingdom of God. The Bible says in verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. The firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, both the things that are visible. And the things that are not visible, hallelujah, amen. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. So what is the Bible saying? Even though the Bible says in John 10 that the thief has come to kill, to steal, to destroy. But Jesus has come to take you into the place of more than enough. So whatever the enemy is doing, you are already delivered because Jesus is your deliverer. Hallelujah. Jesus is your deliverer. He's, whether it is the powers of darkness, he's above them. He says all things were created through him and for him. When you come to that consciousness of the kingdom that you have been translated into, the kingdom where Jesus is in control, the kingdom where Jesus is head above every power of darkness, and they have no legal right, they have no power, to harm you, they have no power to destroy you, they have no power to overcome you. I see my sister, um, um, Coach Grace, God bless you all the way from Houston, God bless you, thank you for joining us, hallelujah. So it says here that all things were created by him. What is it that you desire from God? It was created by him. What is it that is afflicting your life? It was created by God. And what do you do? You take authority in the name of Jesus. This fasting and prayer is, is a DIY. Amen. 
I can join my faith with you, but I want to tell you the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to learn to pray for yourself, is to learn to study the word of God for yourself. It's for you to know the audacity Christ has placed upon you to take charge of this earth. To know that you are not disadvantaged, whether you are male or you are female. The Bible says there is neither male nor female. Hallelujah. We are all servants, children of the Most High God. Amen. You are all children of the Most High God. One of the things Jesus did on the cross of Calvary was to tear into pieces every shame, every low self-esteem, everything that brings you down. He went down into the grave so that when he arose, you arose with him where he is, that you may come up here. You are no longer a disadvantaged person. You are called into the advantage. You have the upper edge because you have the name of Jesus. When you get Get this into your spirit. When you get this into your soul, child of God, there is a boldness that is released upon you where you know that it doesn't matter whatever I face. I always win. I never lose. It doesn't matter what happens around me. I never suffer shame. I never suffer disadvantage because why? I know who lives in me. Hallelujah. That is why I am declaring to you on this second day that Jesus is your deliverer. No man of God can deliver you outside the name of Jesus. No woman of God can deliver you outside the name of Jesus. Even you cannot deliver yourself outside the name of Jesus. The Bible says he has given us a name that is above every name. There are the mention of the name of Jesus. Every name must bow. Every tongue must confess to the glory of God that Jesus is Lord. So it means when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the spirit of God raises the standard over him. So when the devil comes and says, today I'm going to deal with you, you will say, no, Satan, I have a name. At the name of Jesus, Satan gets behind me. And let me tell you, when you have that confidence, I'm telling you, there is nothing the enemy can do to you. Hallelujah. I remember some time ago when I was still, I would like call myself a baby Christian or a Christian that thought she knew the word of God, but didn't know her authority in the word of God. Because there are some people that know the Bible but they don't know the authority they have in the Bible. There are people that can quote the scripture, but they quote it with fear. Ha, 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 the Bible says, but when they are faced with fear, when they are faced with fearful situation, they bow, they bow down, they become scared. They begin to look for, ha, ah, pray for me. They pray with fear. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that everything that has ever brought fear into your life, that it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Because child of God, Jesus took every fearful situation so that you may be bold. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that I continue to read it first in Colossians 1. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, in, that in all things he may have preeminence. You know, sometimes when I look at what is happening in this COVID-19, I say, this is a scripture. <laughs> the Bible says, and he is the head of the body, the church. The church does not belong to anybody. It doesn't belong to any minister. The owner of the church is ruling his church. The owner of his church, of the church, is pulling the church in the direction he wants. The owner of the church is taking charge of what he, he used his blood to purchase for you and I. The owner of the church is delivering people from captivity. You know, it gets to a stage, you know, I had a revelation last night and that revelation was very profound. And in that revelation, I saw like a very massive gate and there were believers inside that gate. And for you to leave that gate, you must give very good reason. Uh, hallelujah. For you to come out of that gate, you must give very good reason. And everyone I saw inside that gate were not supposed to be in that gate. But when I got there, I started giving reasons why these people needed to leave. There was a particular lady who was single, who I saw in that gate. And I said, to the, and I said this one ought to be married. The more you keep her in this gate, the more her chances of getting married is delayed. It was very clear. And so many others. 
So sometimes if you don't know what Christ has done for you, you can be speaking in tongues. You can be lifting up holy hands, but you can still be in a gate. Hallelujah. And as I spoke, they opened the gate and that lady came out of that gate. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Hallelujah. So what am I saying, child of God? There are gates the enemy has put people in. That is why I was encouraging every intercessor. All over the world, your prayers is making tremendous impact. Every time you stand in the gap for any situation, in the realms of the spirit, chains in the lives of people are being broken. In the realms of the spirit, people's lives are being turned around. So you must not relent praying for people. Even if you don't have any prayer point. You know, some years ago, you know, I don't know how people find out their intercessors. But for me, mine was very, very different. I remember some years ago, whenever I want to pray for myself, whenever I want to ask God for something, as I'm asking God, Father, I need this, the Lord slaps a scripture on my face. This scripture bursts out into me. And as I look at that scripture, is the answer to what I'm asking God. And I heard the Lord say, stand in the gap for people. Your voice is relevant. Stand in the gap for people. And I started to realize that when I pray for others, I, I, I go deep into prayer. But when it comes to praying for myself, I see that all my prayers are being answered in the scripture. I see the scripture that answers my prayer. And I see the Lord say, stop wasting, pray, pray for others. And from then I knew that the ministry of prayer is a ministry that, that, that is dear, that I have a burden and a passion for. That lives, destinies are relying on you, on, on me standing in the gap for them. And I pray for you. That may you be one of those whose voice is relevant in the realms of the spirit. May you be one of those who will stand in the gap and lives will be transformed to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So let's turn our Bibles. Let's begin to pray. Amen. For you to know that Jesus is able to do what he says he will do. Hallelujah. There is something you need to know, child of God. You know, this, this platform... It's for those who want to pray. It's for those who want to seek God and know him for, him for themselves. It's for those who want to say, Lord, intervene in my situation. Hallelujah. So I want you to say, Lord, I thank you for making me victorious at all times. You know, I always say this. It doesn't matter the battles. What counts is that you and I win every battle that we go through. I want to say, Lord, I thank you for making me victorious at all times because jesus has paid the price open your mouth begin to pray say lord i thank you for making me victorious father i worship you for causing me to be victorious at all times father because victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to me i am victorious over all my challenges i am victorious over every situation lift up your voice lift up your voice begin to cry out to the lord say father in the name of jesus I thank you because you have made me and you continue to make me victorious at all times. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your hands, begin to worship the Lord, begin to say, Lord, I thank you for victory belongs to you, oh God. Father, because at all times, every challenge of my life, every gate that is raised against me, every, every, every mountain that is in my way, Lord, I thank you because you make me victorious. I will laugh last. I will laugh first because when the challenge comes, I will laugh. While I'm going through the challenge, I am laughing. When the challenge ends, I will continue to laugh. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you because I will laugh. I will laugh over all my challenges. I will laugh over every situation. Everything that I'm going through, Lord, I will laugh. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say, Father, I thank you for your mighty hand that of favor in all that concerns me. Child of God, I shared with you the revelation I had. People were locked in a gate. Let me tell you, it wasn't that they were not saved, but they were not walking in the consciousness 
of who they are in Christ. They didn't know that they ought not be in that gate. They didn't know that those people that stood holding that gate captive, they have no right to stand in that gate. They didn't know huh, that they could speak to those people that appeared big, strong, and able to do all manners of things. They didn't know they could say, in the name of Jesus, I command you, get out of that gate. And they walk into their victory. They didn't know because they didn't allow their minds to be renewed by the word of God. They were more or less looking at the structure of the gate, how high the gate is, how tall the gate is, how muscular the, the, the security people are, because the enemy will always put in front of you something that appears big so that you don't approach it, so that you don't, you don't take authority over it. It took one who is interceding to say, no, this gate ought not be. These people ought to be delivered. These people ought to be set free. And I'm telling you, when your mind is renewed, when you know who you are, when you understand the finished work of Christ, when you understand, according to the scripture that we read in Colossians 1, that Jesus is the head of every principality and every power. He is the one who has delivered you, who is delivering you, and will continue to deliver you. When you understand the scriptures, and it becomes part of your very being, it becomes part of the very breath you take. I'm telling you, you become fearless. You, you face all your challenges challenges headlong. You face all your challenges like a winner. You face all your challenges knowing that the one backing you in your journey, in the journey of life is the creator of the heaven and the earth. You know that the one backing you in all you do is the one who has called you. Let me tell you, child of God, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. There are things that will come to afflict you. Don't be afraid of them. I'm telling you, every day we go through challenges. Challenges does not mean that God is not with you. Challenges does not mean that God is not near you. Challenges does not mean that you will remain in that way because the devil knows you are confident of God. So he will come to touch you to see whether you react. When he touches you and you say, Satan, get there behind me. Or you say fearfully, you now say, oh no, I can go further. But when you stay in the name of Jesus, I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So Satan, you have no right to touch me. You have no legal ground to touch me. When you make that declaration, and it's not a declaration that you make out of fear, it's a declaration you make knowing who you are in Christ. I'm telling you, there is no devil, there is nothing created, there is no man, there is no woman, there is nothing on earth, there is nothing underneath the earth, there is no principality, there is no witches, there is no wizard, there is no congregation of darkness that is able to harm you. Because why? Jesus has paid the price with his blood. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. I see my woman of God and, and Pastor Sandra online. Woman of God, I celebrate you greatly. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is my deliverer. When you understand that Jesus is the one who has delivered you, man did not pay the price of the blood. Man did not stay naked on the cross. Man did not stay abused on the cross. When you understand all the things that Jesus had to go through on the cross of Calvary. Let me tell you, it is difficult for anything created to overcome your life. That is why many times you see that when people are under affliction, the major thing they deal with is the spirit of fear. When people are under affliction, the major thing the enemy bombards them with is fear. Hallelujah. Let me share this with you. I, I, I don't think I shared it when I was talking. I said, when I was still I don't know what, will I say I was still in an um, intermediary stage of Christianity. I knew my scriptures. I knew what the word of God said concerning me. But then I would lie down and sleep. And then some tiny demons would be coming to press themselves, not me. Hallelujah. But one day I came to the knowledge that I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And there is a demarcation between me and the powers of darkness that where I live, rule and reign, they have no dominion. They have no power to come into that, into that space. 
Do you know what I did? I went to bed. I said, okay, I am ready. I don't know about you, but when I have a dream and it looks like I was fighting and I didn't win that dream, I go back and say, come again. Because I win. The scripture says, I win. The word of God says, I win. The word of God says, you win. Hallelujah. So what did I do? That night, whatever came to press itself, not me, I said, in the name of Jesus, begin frog jump. You know, I'm from Nigeria. When we're growing up, they tell you, put your hands on your ear and begin to do frog jump. I could hear that noise. Boom, boom, boom. And I went back to bed. Hallelujah. I went back to bed. Since that day, such attack never come because in the realms of the spirit, I'm, I am fierce. I fight my battles and I win my battles because I know what Jesus did for me. When I was just saying in the name of Jesus, 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 ah, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Ah, when I wake up, I say, ah, thank God I survived. They will come again. Hallelujah. They will come again. <laughs> when you keep acting in fear, oh, I saw, well, they were chasing me. They had a knife. They were chasing me. I kept running. Ah, and I woke up. Ah, they didn't catch me. No, 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 no. Go back. <laughs> say, in the name of Jesus. In the name, even if you wake up, you say, in the name of Jesus. I am translated from darkness into light. Jesus is the head of principalities and powers. I rule in the realms of this earth and in the spiritual realm. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. And when you begin to make these affirmations in your spirit, when you begin to make these affirmations in your soul, when you begin to bounce around your room, I don't know how people pray about me. When I'm praying, I put my hands here and I begin to speak the word. I begin to say who I am in Christ. I begin to say I cannot be defeated. I begin to say yes. He that is in me is able to do exceedingly. I begin to say every accusation over my life, I destroy them. As I begin to make those affirmations, something in my spirit begins to well. The word of God has the power and the ability to do anything in your favor. Glory to God. But you and I must come to that understanding. You and I must come to that knowledge that Jesus is your deliverer. Hallelujah. Jesus is your deliverer. So I want you to say this prayer with me. Thank the Lord for redeeming you and your prayer life from the stronghold of death. There is somebody, somebody called me and said, woman of God, I thank you for this fasting and prayer because I was weak in the place of prayer. But when I saw you on fire, 6 a.m. you were here, 12 you were here. She said, something in me rose up. So child of God, when you stand in the gap, somebody somewhere who is not even aligning with you is watching and feeling encouraged. Somebody is, is, is looking. Maybe they, they are lethargic in the place of prayer. But because you are right and you are praying, something begins to change in their life. Say, Father, I thank you for redeeming me. And my prayer lifestyle, I always said you cannot go far without prayer. You cannot do great things without prayer. You cannot go to where God wants you to be without prayer. There is no shortcut to glory. There is no shortcut to greatness. There is no shortcut to hear and become a, mouth, a mouthpiece or to be one who becomes the custodian of the things of God. It must be somebody who stands in the place of prayer. It must be somebody who sits and feeds on the word of God. There is no shortcut. Anytime you see somebody who, who feels, I, can, I have the eloquence of speech so I can talk, I can preach. I, ha I have the marketing strategy to draw people to come and hear the word of God. When you see so they are like a fan whose socket has been taken off the switch. So they are still running. People are still seeing them running, but within a short while, they go down. Because why? Prayer is that antidote that keeps funning you, funning your strength. Like this morning, when I woke up, left to my flesh, it will look as if one is tired water fast but look at me because we are powered by the holy ghost we have the power of the holy ghost in us we can do all things you know yesterday i was ministering to with my in my sister's ministry in in south africa 
and it was dress her up. And when I ministered, I let women know that you are not disadvantaged. Hallelujah. You are the king's daughter is glorious from within. The Lord put it in me so that you will know what is inside of you. When you understand the kind of adornments God has put inside you as a woman, I'm telling you, there's a way you walk. There's a way you smile. There's a way you express yourself. There's a way you stand. There's a way you carry yourself because you do not need human affirmation. When God has already affirmed you, when God has already said, this is who you are, when God has already given you a description of how he wants, how he molded you. You know, we looked at, we looked at, um, uh, we looked at Psalm 45. I explained to them, I said, look, the Bible says that the gold from Ophir is what you are adorned with. You see, if you understand where Ophir comes from, it's from a place where and a, a place that is abundance of wealth. That, that is where is Solomon, every three years, they bring, they bring him gold and all manners of great things. Gifts. I said, woman, when you understand your value, when you understand how God has created you, when you understand who you are in Christ, you will not accept anything mediocre. You will not accept to live a lifestyle that does not glorify God. Because when God made you and I, he specially crafted you. He specially crafted me. He adorned us with beautiful gold. He adorned our dressing. You see, when they say, oh, women dress so beautifully, go and read Psalm 45 and see the mind of your creator, how he embellishes you with beauty. When you understand who you are in Christ, I'm telling you at that minute, every low self-esteem, every I cannot do it, every it is not possible becomes a thing of the past. I see uh, my sister, um, Sister Obi, she is the, the founder of Women and Their Seed. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. I see Pastor Faith of Christ Embassy Bexley. Woman of God, I love you. I celebrate you. I see my sister all the way from Atlanta. She is, I call her my bridge. Um, um, Evangelist Bibi. You know, there's this, what's my name? I celebrate you. Hallelujah. When you understand who you are as a woman, child of God, you will not be apologetic for anything God has placed inside you to do. Hallelujah. You will not be apologetic. I told them, go and read through the scripture. When you understand that the king's daughter is glorious from within, that means inside of you is beautiful things. We went as far as looking at Galatians 5 because it is what is on your inside that can reflect what is on your outside. Hallelujah. When your inside is full of joy, is full of love, is full of patience, let me tell you, you, ex, you are somebody who is walking in the adornment of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But if your life is full of bitter envy, of jealousy, fornication, adultery, uncleanliness, those things inside you, no matter how you mask it, you can never see with the eyes of God. You can never see with the eyes of the master. The eyes of the master sees purity, sees clarity, sees beauty. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to say, Lord, I thank you for delivering me from the stronghold of death. Some people, when I say the stronghold of death, some people only think that death has to do with when somebody physically dies. Let me tell you, when somebody physically dies, it's so much better than when somebody is alive, walking, eating, going to work, doing all manners of things, but they are brain dead. What do I mean by being brain dead? Brain dead is that you do not know what this Bible says you are. You do not know what the word of God says you can be. You do not know what the word of God says you will become. Let me tell you the most miserable life any man or woman can live is a life of not knowing the authority 
the power, the provision, the pecs, the, 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 the different accolades God has provided for them through his word. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. On this second day of our 30 days fasting and prayer, that the Lord will deliver you from every stronghold of death, be it, de be it the death of ignorance, the death of foolishness, you know, the death of, 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 of laziness, whatever that has made you lazy, unable to sit with God in his word and know what he's saying concerning you. I'm telling you today, those strongholds are being destroyed in the name of Jesus. You are coming out a new man. You are coming out a new woman. You are coming out as somebody who will walk in the understanding that you always win because Jesus has delivered you. Jesus has delivered you. No, and what does the word of God say? He has delivered me. When I gave my life to Christ, I was delivered out of darkness. When the enemy raises up his head like a, like, 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 like it roars like a lion, he will deliver me. And no matter what I see, even along the way, the deliverance is waiting for me. So it is a present continuous. Your deliverance is a present continuous. You have been delivered when you gave your life to Christ. When challenges come your way, you are being delivered. When your future, it looks as if there is something in your way, deliverance is already waiting for you. Hallelujah. I see my woman of God from South Africa. Pastor Pru, God bless you. Thank you so much. All of you from South Africa for honoring me. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So child of God, they are going to say, Lord, they're going to say, Father, ask that the God of all graces, you see, there is grace for different things in life. You know, I love the scripture when Paul said, the God of all graces, that he should release grace for strength and tenacity throughout to wait on him in Jesus name. You see, I always say something very profound. Our journey with God is a personal race. I cannot fast for you. I can fast with you. I can pray for you, but it is better when we pray together. Hallelujah. I cannot, I cannot, uh, uh, it's like a child that wants to walk. You can give the child a walker to help the steps, but eventually that child will have to take steps themselves. And I'm telling you, when that child begins to walk and is independent, you see the joy on their face. I remember my daughter, she didn't walk till she was about 15 months. She was so massive. Hallelujah. So I remember when she would walk and not fall. You will see her laughing. You will see the joy all over her. But she was so afraid to walk. She will hold on to every, everything she can hold on to. She will walk. She will hold on to. She will walk. Even when you try to make her stand, you will see her two legs shaking, shaking, shaking. You can see that she's using her toes. She's using the heel of her feet. She's shaking, shaking, shaking. But one day, she got up. And she started walking. What am I saying? It doesn't matter how it is right now. Understand one thing. That with God, you have the strength and the tenacity to wait on him in this 30 days. If this is one thing you're doing this year. You know, one of my friends called me and said, woman of God, ah, with this your days of fasting, what about work? I said, I'm not working this month. She said, really? How are you going to survive? I said, he that fed the prophet will feed us because I've made provision for this season. I've made provision that I will take this month off and wait on the Lord. There is nothing God cannot provide. There is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing God cannot make, him, make available for you because I need him. The, you know, the psalmist said, as the deer panted, so does my soul pants for you. Hallelujah. My prayer for you is that you will pray and say, Lord, the God of all graces. What is grace? The power of God in the life of a man that makes you do the extraordinary. When God empowers you with grace, favor becomes something that is mandatory in your life. What do you want the grace? Do you want grace for? 
You know, there's one of my mothers in the Lord, when she sees all my cooking, she'll say, woman of God, she calls me apostle. That's how she calls me. I don't have grace for cooking. I have grace for other things. I have grace to pray for people to find their calling. But you see cooking, I don't have grace for it. And for me, even from years back before we started feeding the homeless, most of my friends will tell you, when you come to my house, you don't just go like that. You go to my freezer, there is food. I always have packs of food. So cooking is something I, I have grace for. I don't struggle. I don't have any. And so there are things you need the grace of God for. Even to pray, you need grace. Even to, 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 to run your business, you need grace. Even in ministry, you need grace. Even to manage people, we need grace. Hallelujah. So even for this 30 days fasting, you need grace. You see, after yesterday, as I was praying and thanking the Lord for what he did, you know, I wanted to post a picture of yesterday, the three hours of prayer. And I had the enemy whisper to me, in the next five, six days, will you be this strong? Will your voice be this loud? And I said, Satan, shut up. I am empowered by Christ Jesus. So it's not that the voice of the enemy would not sing through, but you have the ability through the word of God and the grace of God to silence the accuser. So I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, ask that Father release grace for strength and tenacity throughout to wait on you. Only yesterday, my son had a revelation, and I believe that if God can use a seven-year-old to avert danger in the life of his teacher, because he too is fasting. He's fasting till 12. The bigger ones are doing either three o'clock or, or six o'clock, because throughout this month, anything I do, I carry my, my family along. Why? Because they are the next generation. Hallelujah. Your children, your family is the next generation. My family in Africa, everyone is waiting on the Lord. Why? Because our voice is relevant in this season. God is looking for genuine intercessors. God is looking for those whose voice, when they speak, the kingdom of darkness give way. And I shared with you last night, the word the Lord showed me gate that is raised and I had to speak on behalf of a lady and I said this lady ought to be married she was sitting there comfortably they didn't let her go so that is why I am teaching this in the place of prayer it's enough for me to say oh go and do this and do that but when you are in your own secret corner you don't know the tenets of what you need to ask the Holy Spirit Spirit of the living God the tenacity to wait on you to wait on your instructions. Father, release it upon me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, begin to pray. Father, the tenacity, Father, grant it unto us that we will wait on you. We will hear what God is saying in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Amen. Today is Sunday. I want you to intercede for your church that the fire of the Holy Spirit is ignited afresh and anew. Also pray for everyone the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. The power of death will not hold them down in Jesus' name. This is the time you need to pray for your church. Even if you don't have a church, pray for any church God brings to your heart. Every one of us have visited churches, the Catholic church, the Anglican church, whatever church, the Orthodox church, pray for the church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for his family. Pray that he will be ignited afresh and anew. That the mighty hand of God will uphold him. I myself standing, I, I, there are people interceding over my life in different nations of the world. They are standing. I am not here because I know how to do it. But because some people have made up their mind that woman of God counts me in to stand in the gap for you. So that the fire of the word of God will not go down. That I will not give in to the pressures of life. I want you to say, Father, we lift up the church. We lift up, Father, I stand in the gap for all the pastors, all the bishops, 
all the archbishops, all the evangelists, all the teachers, all the ministers of the gospel. Father, that the fire of the Holy Spirit is ignited afresh, that as many that have gone back into the world, that they will come back into the north that have strayed. They have strayed because of financial gain. They have strayed because of pressure. The Bible says that King Saul, because of pressure, he strayed. Because of pressure, he went to visit the, the witch of Endo. That our ministers will not take an alternative route in the name of Jesus. That the power of death will not hold them down. In the name of Jesus, lift up every member of your family. Lift up your, your, your children. Lift up your household, your extended family. Father, we lift them up that the power of death will not hold them down. Because Jesus said he has come to give life and give life more abundantly. The word of God says in Hosea 13, 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Father, we pray for those who are riddled with cancer, with any form of incurable disease, leprosy, whatever sickness that they are riddled with. Father, we decree that the power of death will not hold them down in the name of Jesus. He will not hold them down in the name of Jesus. Begin to stand in the gap. Begin to pray. Some of you that are watching me, you're in the hospital. Begin to pray for your patients. Begin to pray. Lift them up. Say, Father, that you will heal them supernaturally, that whatever sickness they have come in with, that Lord, that let that sickness disappear in the name of Jesus. You have that power. You have that authority. Jesus has equipped you with that anointing that whatever you say comes to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray for prayer jumpstart and school of evangelism. We're going to commit it before the Lord. The Bible says, commit your ways before the Lord and he will establish your path. That he shall live and thrive from glory to glory. I want to say, Lord, that prayer jumpstart, that is not about starting. It's not about, oh, I have a ministry. It's about the power of God being evident in that ministry. It's about the grace of God being evident in that ministry. It's about that ministry coming under the, under, the, under the banner of God's kingdom. There are ministries you see, you can already, from the minute you see it, you know that there is something off about this ministry. There are some of us, some ministers, they started well, they meant well, but the pressure of life pushed them. Say, Father, prayer jumps to the school of evangelism. You shall live and thrive. As I'm praying, pray for your own ministry. And move from glory to glory. You don't need a man to announce you. God himself can announce you. Hallelujah. As you wait on him. You know, I always say something. <laughs> you cannot wake up today and suddenly you want 10,000 members. No. Step by step. Precept by precept. Allow God to build his ministry. When you want to build it yourself, you don't have the perfect manual. Allow God to build the ministry. I don't know who needs to hear this. Allow God to do the changes. You know, when, when David was anointed as king, he was still hidden. But on the day of his appearance, suddenly people gathered around him. Mighty men came around him. So sometimes you want to do everything yourself, but wait, God. When that veil, you know, yesterday I pray, many of you listen to Encountering God's Glory. When the veil is taken off, you become visible. You become opportunities open for you. Doors open for you. Don't rush it. Allow God to do what makes him God. And when God announces you, when God makes your ministry to thrive or your business to thrive, let me tell you, when people are saying, where did he come from? They will go back to history and see that you have been there for a long time. Only that at the appointed time, it pleased the Lord to announce you. And when God announces you and causes you to move from glory to glory, he brings people who not only marry your vision, but they help to see your vision become a reality. They make sure, the Bible says Elisha 
was the one, when they wanted to describe Elisha, they said he was the one that poured water on the hands of Elijah. He was a helper. Everyone could see that he made sure that the master's hands were not dirty. I pray for you. And I pray for prayer, John Stark, that we commit all ministries before the hands of God, that it shall live and thrive from glory to glory. I always say there's room for everyone. There is room at the top. Do you know what gives me the confidence that my ministry can stand alongside your ministry and we keep moving from glory to glory? Do you know why? Because Jesus said in his word that we are seated with him in heavenly places. So if Jesus can make room for you and I to sit with him, I as his daughter, I as a child of God, I ought to make room for others to sit with me. I ought to make room for others. Your shining has nothing to do with mine. Hallelujah. Because God has given all of us different graces. There is an area of your life that I need. And there is an area of my life that you need. And together we are stronger in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'm going to say, Father. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you for the manifestation of prayer, of praying in tongues and in understanding. Ask for the gift of interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. I see um, um, Pastor Scam Morrison and, um, um, and Adip Peju watching. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Hallelujah. I want to say, Father, empower me with the manifestation of praying in tongues. You know, no matter how much we talk in our understanding, praying in the spirit makes tremendous power available. You touch areas you do not know. You touch areas where God wants you to touch. When you pray in tongues, you are praying in your heavenly language. Hallelujah. I want to quickly look for what I wrote here about praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, because it's very important. There are some people that say, oh, why, <clears throat> what are they praying in tongues? Why is she praying in tongues? Praying in tongues is our heavenly language. Hallelujah. Amen. Praying in tongues is our heavenly language. The Bible, um, this book, Prayer Jumpstart, it says advantages of praying in tongues. There is an affinity with languages. It connects people, deepens intimacy, and brings closeness. When we begin to pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit connects with us. Praying in tongues brings exclusiveness and cuts people off from what they are saying. There is no language the devil does not understand. But when you pray in tongues, it brings privacy and cuts off the devil. It builds and strengthens your faith. When you pray in tongues, you experience spiritual refreshing in the midst of dryness. Praying in tongues gives us access into the revelational insight and helps us gain a better understanding of the word of God as he is the author and interpreter of the word. Hallelujah. Praying in tongues also births creativity. You can read the rest. When you, when you study prayer jumpster. So when you pray in the spirit, it opens up a lot into your spirit, man. Sometimes you might be even tired to pray. You may even feel lethargic. But when you begin to pray in the spirit, there is power, there is energy being released upon your life. You see, even though I'm online, I pray in the spirit, but I always, I'm also conscious that there are people who are watching who are not born again. Hallelujah. So I, I also pray in understanding so that they too can connect with us. Hallelujah. So that's why the, the prayer said, pray for the gifts and the understanding of speaking in tongues and the interpretation. So when you pray in tongues and you cannot interpret, you need a greater grace. Hallelujah. So it's very important, especially when you're praying in public. Not only to pray in the spirit, but also to have that gift of interpretation of tongues. You're going to say we release the fire of the Holy Spirit on any demonic camp on assignment to hold down or end your life, end your career, end your ministry, 
end your family, your business, and your calling in the name of Jesus. The Bible says <clears throat> that the thief has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You know, so we have authority in the name of Jesus. You're going to say, Father, every demonic camp in the name of Jesus. This is prayer number eight. Hallelujah. Father, we release the fire of the Holy Spirit on any demonic camp, on assignment to hold down, to end our life, our career, our ministry, our family, our business, our calling, we send the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume such powers in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Whatever that is on assignment to end that which God has given you. Today we come against it in the name of Jesus. Today we pull it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Every assignment of darkness. Let me tell you, the enemy can choose an assignment. The assignments may be to set up traps, to set up things so that you can fall. But in the name of Jesus, the one that said in his word that he has redeemed you, that he will continue to redeem you and he will keep redeeming you. That same God is able to, to see you through. The one that said in his word that he has come, that you might have life and have life in abundance. Lift up your voice and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we release the fire of the Holy Spirit on any demonic camp, every gathering of darkness, on assignment to bring you down, on assignment to bring everything God has put in your hands down. Begin to come against them in the name of Jesus. We command in the name of Jesus, let them perish. Let the assignment come to nothing. We scatter the assignment. We command the assignment to call, to go back unfulfilled in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus smiling there we pray amen i want you to say to declare victory over all your cha challenges declare total escape from every snare in the name of Jesus. I don't know who needs to pray this prayer. I don't know who needs this prayer. Begin to declare victory over all your challenges. I don't care whatever that is a challenge in your life right now. I hear the spirit of the loving God say, I hear the spirit of God say that victory is coming your way. Every challenge that comes your way right now, we declare victory. We declare total escape from every snare. Every snare that is set set up against you, set up against your family, set up against your marriage, set up against your household, every snare we command in the name of Jesus. Let we declare total victory in the name of Jesus. Your God is able to do exceedingly. Your God is able to do abundantly more than you can think or imagine. Jesus is our deliverer. So we declare victory over every challenge of life. Whatever challenge that is up, uh, around your life, whatever challenge that is on your way right now we declare victory in jesus mighty name say number say father father thank you begin to thank the lord say father i thank you for empowering me to fast and pray thank you for answered prayer lift up your voice begin to bless the name of the lord say lord we thank you for answered prayer for answered prayer today is the first sunday in this month and i know that god has heard your prayer god has heard my prayer god has heard all that we have asked of him in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, begin to worship him, begin to thank him, begin to say, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you because you have heard our prayer. Lord, we thank you, oh God, because you have heard our prayer. You have heard everything we have brought before your throne. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We thank you. We worship you. We say you are worthy, you are worthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to worship the Lord. This is the first Sunday in the month of new beginning. This is the month of divine compensation. So I want you to dance to the Lord. I want you to glorify his name for what he has done and what he is doing because he's a great God. So please join me to worship the Lord. Father, we thank you. This is the first day.
Hallelujah. But I will declare you are great. Thank you, Lord. Somebody wash you the Lord. play hallelujah it must play amen it must play we will dance is the first sunday of the month so let's start the dance here
I shall not know. 